Hey everybody, welcome to this week's weekly roundup. I promise, now I have to stick to it, that this will not be 15 minutes. So let's get to it. Uh, first things first is our uh, annual street update. So we will be starting crack filling next week in the areas of Milford Street and Market Street. So crack filling is kind of like that black worm that looks like it goes uh, in the road. It is a maintenance effort that we do and sometimes we crack fill uh, roads and then we work on uh, seal coating them in, in years to come. So needless to say, you're gonna see um, some of our contractors out in the roadway around Milford and Market. So please be mindful of them there. Uh, on our annual street work, 11th and 12th, uh, the work we're doing near Western Avenue is going well. Uh, the water main installs done, stu uh, storm sewer is uh, going in um, now. So things are progressing well there. Water main installation is starting on Oconomowoc Avenue. Um, so that project is moving along. And then I think the one that's likely to finish up uh, the quickest is Boomer Street. So Boomer Street will get a binder course, which is an actually a layer of asphalt that's underneath what they call the surface course. Uh, it'll get binder course and surface course um, next week, uh, Monday through Wednesday. And then the biofilter should be finished next week as well. So again, this was a state-led uh, project and the city added some addition sec additional sections of Boomer Street onto that project just to kind of complete that section of road. Um, but hopefully that one will button up next week. As you know, we've had a lot of projects going. So we did have a retaining wall project at the Senior and Community Center. It was the retaining walls that looked out over uh, the river. Those were failing and leading to a variety of issues, including flooding. And so that project is now complete. That was a combination of contractors and local city staff. So we're excited to have that one done. And then the Riverside Park bathrooms, the Main Street Bridge, and the fire station are all going well. I feel like we all need to collectively knock on wood now that I've said that out loud, but things are going along nicely with the timeline. Uh, we're not um, bumping into any uh, major issues that would throw that timeline off. So we're praying that continues. Uh, this week we had pretty big, uh, pretty big news. Um, Rock River Ridge, which is the neighborhood that is uh, being, that is currently owned by the Great Watertown Community Health Foundation. Um, that neighborhood that we've talked about for a few years, we approved this week a development agreement with the foundation for the development of that land. So what that means is that uh, we have agreed that the city will be a partner in this development. Uh, and in exchange, Rock River Ridge uh, will have 78 single family homes, 18 twin homes, and then there's also uh, a multifamily housing uh, deal that is being discussed with um, a a well-known uh, multifamily developer. Um, that project in particular will, will come to uh, public meetings in probably the fall, probably October-ish. Without getting into too much detail, there is a date in September <laughs> that you, you wanna be mindful of when you're doing these types of deals because of the way TIFs can be uh, created. And so we're gonna bring that one after that point in time and we'll have that come uh, ready to go in October. Um, next week, our meetings are a little bit lighter than what they have been, which is good. Uh, so we'll have Historic Preservation and Downtown Design Commission, kind of a small public works, but then we have a lot going on at Plan Commission, and I wanted to highlight that. So at Plan Commission, we have three major projects. Uh, one is from Belinsky. So Belinsky has been you know, building uh, in the community for, I don't know, the better part of probably you know, two decades maybe at this point. Um, and what they're going to be doing is proposing a change to a general development plan that would change a certain area on their plan from sing two single family small lots. Um, this is essentially single family homes with reduced size lots, which can make those homes more affordable to more folks. Um, they're looking at a total of 53 lot or yes, 53 lots in three phases. Kind of a tongue twister. Um, so we'll hear um, their proposal and then the plan commission is only deciding to set a public hearing date. So that means the next opportunity will be for members of the public to come to the common council uh, and attend the public hearing. The second item is you will, uh, we are considering is a, the city is leading a vacation of a roadway, which is just a fancy way of saying we're going to abandon a section of road. And I would venture to say the majority of people in Watertown don't even know it's a section of road, but right outside of city hall, between the fire station and um, the parking lot is a little stub of roadway. And we are uh, beginning the process of vacating that section of roadway uh, in order to pave the way for uh, the development that we heard from F Street. So again, F Street uh, is proposing to develop um, smaller density multifamily. And when I say smaller density, in this case, I think they're looking at 12 units right around there. So uh, we're gonna have that street vacation 
And then the last is we will be hearing uh, a proposal from uh, Graymar LLC, who's commonly known as Loose Homes, uh, to annex approximately 20 acres into the city of Watertown. And they, at this point, they have a conceptualization of a 48 lot subdivision. So all tremendous projects, all things that we need uh, in this community for housing. I feel like I talk about it every single week, perhaps every single day. Um, but we have been working um, on a lot of housing projects for the last few years, and it's exciting to see some of these come to come to pass. So I know this week uh, with the announcement of the development agreement, it got a lot of people talking about housing, which is great. That's what we want to hear. Um, and I know there's been some concern around the uh, types of housing and the diversity in the types of housing. And so I wanted to just use this opportunity to highlight a few things. So if we take the projects I just described, uh, F Street, Loose Homes, Belinsky, and we couple that with Rock River Ridge and the Allworth Street development that's been discussed a lot, we are doing uh, single family homes, small lot single family homes, condominium style single family homes. And I'd encourage you to Google that. They basically look like single family homes, <laughs> but you don't have to take care of the yard and common spaces. Twin homes, so side by side duplexes. We're doing, we're having a proposal for higher density multifamily. In this case, that's the Allworth Street um, apartments. I think that's around 128 units. And then lower density multifamily um, with F Street. So I think I maybe just rattled off five, maybe six or seven <laughs> different types of housing. And that's the important part. Like that's the game that we are working to play. The sequencing we're trying to, to make happen because yes, some of that will be unaffordable for some people. Um, but what it does is it brings new people to our community, which is great. They have uh, resources that they can spend and support our little local microeconomy. And then it opens up housing. You guys have heard me talk about this cycle many, many times. Um, if my neighbor is looking for one of those seven types of housing, then it frees up my neighbor's home. And then someone can afford, you know, that 200-ish, I have no idea, $1,000 home. So I, I just wanna, you know, keep people remembering that we are playing a long game, a long strategy around housing and the housing types that we're bringing into the community. And if you wanna know more, I'd encourage you to ask. I mean, we love talking about housing uh, because it's what we know over time uh, will grow our community. Um, and just, just as a point of reference, Rock River Ridge, as an example, will add over $900,000 to our tax base. So that's $900,000 that we wouldn't have had elsewhere. Um, and as things get more and more expensive, I'm sure you guys can piece that together. I mean, that's beneficial for everyone in the community. So we'll keep talking a ton about housing, but I just wanted just in uh, kind of in this moment of reflection to realize like, dang, we have you know, six or seven different types of housing we're working on. Those have varying price points and that frees up other housing in our current system. So we're gonna keep trudging away at it. All right, that's enough of that one. Uh, <laughs> license renewals. I talked about it last time. I'll probably try to talk about it one more time because it's really important. So if you have a restaurant, retail, food, campground, pools, lodging, you know if you have this kind of license, it is due for renewal on June 30th. Every year we always have a few people that don't do it and then that interrupts their business and we don't want that to happen. So please make sure you get those um, health department license renewals turned in and paid for by June 30th. On the rec side, we have some new offerings this week. So we're doing a meditation and yoga class on Monday evenings at Lincoln Park, which sounds very lovely. We are doing a summer endurance training Wednesday evenings at Riverside. Equally as lovely, just perhaps not my crowd. I, I don't know that my fitness level is at the endurance category. Uh, and then on the, for the kids, we're doing um, summer soccer camp in July. And then uh, we're also doing a summer workshop on Tuesday. So next week, Tuesday at 530. And this is about uh, how to prepare quick and healthy meals, which I'm sure all of us are leading incredibly busy lives. It's really hard to make sure that we're eating nutritiously in those moments. So this class is really of interest and I hope uh, people uh, take the time to attend. The library is obviously still doing camp library. I feel like I need to give a shout out to um, our children's librarian and all the support staff uh, and Kevin, our custodian, who was brave enough to allow us to make slime at the library <laughs> in the community room. I can only imagine how terrifying that was, but I saw photos and it seemed like uh, the youth of our community had a tremendous time. So uh, Camp Library, Wednesday afternoons, check out their schedule for next week's activity. They also added pickleball paddles and to the library of things. So this allows you to check something out and kind of test it out before you invest for yourself. We are talking bigger picture pickleball strategy with the park and rec. We know there's a demand for pickleball 
specific courts. And there is a plan in the works uh, on that that we'll be able to share more on soon. And then they also have that sewing machine class coming up next week, so I wanted to make sure to mention that. At the Benson Family Town Square, the splash pad is open from 10 to 9. We do close it every once in a while for events. Uh, Monday is obviously food trucks at the square. And then next week, which I'm so excited about, is our first evening uh, market. So this is food, vendors, uh, and music. So 4 to 7, Thursday at the square. Come and get your kind of farmer's market, artisan-esque type needs. Have a meal. Enjoy the community. On the jobs front, we still are looking for either an assistant city engineer or, oh shoot, excuse, a civil engineer, I think is what it's called. Uh, we are hiring a part-time fire inspector or a firefighter paramedic, either entry or lateral transfer. We, are, we have a new posting this week for a public health nurse. If you're in that field at all, check, check out this posting. It's such an incredible way to use your skills in a Monday through Friday setting uh, and just have a positive impact on the health of our community. We're hiring a part-time library assistant and a part-time media and communications assistant. And then uh, three other ones that are uh, very important, a water operator at, at our water department. We are in really serious need for dispatchers. If you're even wondering if you wanna be a dispatcher, can you please just reach out to us? We will do our best to kind of give you insight into what a day in the life of a dispatcher looks like. In fact, that's a little teaser. We're gonna be putting out, a, I think, a video soon about what it's like to be a dispatcher. Um, but we really need people in that role, obviously. And then we also have an opening for a police officer. For the weekend, lots happening as usual. Today, Friday, is a concert at the square. So food trucks at six, concert at seven. And then tomorrow morning, the police department is hosting their annual bike rodeo. So this begins at 10 a.m. It's for kids 12 and younger who can ride a two-wheeled bike. Please bring your bike and your helmet. Come do some courses, engage with our PD, uh, and learn about bike safety. Speaking of bike safety, tomorrow is also the Tour de Goose. So you're gonna see a ton of people riding their bikes on various routes throughout the community and really in the surrounding area as well outside the city limits. Please be mindful of the riders in the road. And then on Sunday at the square at 1 p.m., which you do need to purchase tickets in advance for, we're having a parent and child painting class. So a wide variety of events to pick from. Um, I hope you have a good weekend. We'll see you next week.